Baltimore in the house. Yes. Oh my gosh, Leah, you look amazing. I love your bob right now and the orange. I love it. You know, it was so weird because I saw, as I was editing my film, I would walk, I would look at my face all day long and the end of the day, I would look in the mirror and I'd be like startled <laughs> that the girl from the movie was in the mirror. And I was like, nope, I gotta, you know, I need to change to be able to separate myself. It was getting a little wonky. So. Oh my God. Op City. <laughs> <laughs> Leah, congratulations to you on this film. My best friend also named Lauren. We've been texting about it since we both saw it and we absolutely love it. So I'm so excited to chat with you today and you should be really, really proud. I know this was like a really personal journey for you. And like you said, you know, editing yourself on screen and watching yourself on screen kind of relive this is a lot. So my dearest, dearest congratulations because I loved it and I think it's going to ring true to a lot of women. Thank you so much. That means so much. It really is like birthing a baby right now. It's really crazy. I feel very naked and out there and exposed and not sure if I'm ready, but buckling up. <laughs> I am ready for the world to see it. I think that women are going to re really relate to it, but I also think it'll be really educational for men and parents too, because like there was a lot of that added like parent pressure and just pressure of being a woman mid thirties, not being married, not having kids. And I loved that. Those were like the main themes of this film. Hell yeah. I was just saying that it, it's really such a win for me when a guy comes up to me and goes, I had no idea that it was so involved and so difficult that egg freezing was this big of a deal because I've had friends that have done it and they didn't really talk about it. And I'm like, yes, can we all just give a little love to women when they are fighting for their fertility or fighting, you know, whether it's IVF or, or whatever they're going through, can we just give women a little bit more love and space? Absolutely. No, I think so too. And I like I, I think it's going to be very educational for a lot of guys. I know that this was inspired by your own, you know, freezing your eggs journey. You said, I think you were in like, it was during the pandemic. It was a couple of years ago. And you were like, you know what, I'm just going to do this. So how much are you like the character of Nellie? And is that it's just really interesting when a director and actor takes their own experience and puts it on film. So I'm curious. I'm like, I'm wondering how much Leah is actually like the character Nellie. I'm a lot like Nellie. I would say <laughs> like a heightened little younger version of myself. I, so much of the film is true to life. My best friend really was pregnant at her wedding. My dad really did buy me baby shoes for Christmas. My, they had a, he had a really hard time getting over my ex. My ex did move on quite quickly and get married and do the thing I am not married and um so a lot of it was really true the throwback tour of the dudes from the past wanting to revisit and see if you know there's I overlooked a winner right. spoiler alert I didn't <laughs> Wait, but one of the, I, I love that one of the funniest parts of the film is the naming of all the exes. And I love the title cards coming out. It's like the prom king, the cult leader. Nope. <laughs> How did you decide on all of the different types of like stereotypical awful exes? You know, what's so funny is when, when people read the script, I would have those titles and mm -hmm. everybody would ask me, is that actually going to be like on the screen? And I got asked that so often that I started to doubt myself where I was like, is this like crazy what I'm doing? Because everyone is bringing it up. But that was always the vision that we're like titling the dudes, because even in high school, when we would talk about guys that we liked, we would give them these code names in order to be able to talk about them like in front of them. Right. That's always something that I've done. And I feel like it's something that girls do a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like it it helps the audience kind of learn the history in a really quick way. Like they don't need to have seen flashbacks to know that this prom king, oh, he was a cool guy, probably hurt her. You know, he was he was the 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 pick of the litter at one point. Did he peek? Maybe a lot of them do, you know. So I liked that sort of um fast track into her into their history. Yeah, no, I love the, the cartoony title cards on the screen. I thought that was really well done. Well, I can also tell you're a huge fan of pop culture. I think one of the lines you have is like, I don't even know if I want to have kids. I've seen Euphoria and I was dying over that. And of course, there's several uh, lines from The Handmaid's Tale, Praise Be. And of course, Queen Yvonne is in it. She's one of my favorite actors of all time. I'm obsessed with Chuck 
and The Handmaid's Tale. And um, so I wanted to ask first about the pop culture references. And it just seemed like you're a huge fan of Euphoria like me. I'm just, I'm such a connoisseur of pop culture. I'm looking at your Buffy in the background and your Twilight and your Scream. And it's just, I'm with you on all of it. Buffy was the single most formative character of my entire life, probably. She is so iconic. I got to meet Sarah Michelle and it was like, I did a really good job of not crying, but I was freaking out inside. So I always infuse my my loves of all things pop culture into my work. I think it helps, I hope that it helps the reader when it's a script or the viewer when it's a film kind of understand the character and and connect with the character. You know, I referenced Taylor Swift and I think we all have our favorite Taylor Swift songs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Obsessed. Love her or hate her, you, you know you have a Taylor favorite Taylor Swift song, you know? I'm obsessed with Delicate. Delicate is like my jam right now, yes. Delicate. <laughs> you too. So much. It's so beautiful. It makes me cry. Every time I'm like dating a new guy, I feel like that's the song where it's like oh. right now, Delicate, I don't want to be too much. I don't want to care too much. It's yes. Delicate. I love that song. Yes. Um. Did I answer the question? Pop yes, culture. you yeah. did. And I was like, and Buffy is my favorite TV show of all time too. So I'm obsessed that you were also obsessed with, with the character of Buffy Summers and Sarah Michelle Gellar. Absolutely. Who cannot? How can you not be? <laughs> Very iconic feminist role. Love her. Absolutely. So are you and Yvonne friends? Because I loved the scene. She's obviously plays the pregnant friend at the baby shower. And of course, all of the friends are asking your character, Nellie, oh, what's going on with you, you know, and stuff. But she was absolutely fantastic in this role. And obviously she is in The Handmaid's Tale. So it's kind of like breaking the fourth wall like a little bit there when you mentioned some of the quotes, which I absolutely loved. So how did Yvonne come to be in the film? You know, fun fact about that I've not even told her myself yet. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell her. But when I first moved to LA, I had to get my SAG card, my union card, and I was an extra on everything. And you're waking up at 5 a.m. and you're in a bikini and you're getting, they're throwing you pretzels. I mean, it's a rough gig. But I was an extra on Chuck. And I remember seeing her work and thinking, not only is this woman so tall and gorgeous, just statuesque, a goddess, but she was not messing around. I mean, she was focused. She was like in it. She was like not, you know, some people are joking around on set. She was like such a professional and I was just in awe of her. Mm -hmm. And then years later, I met with her about doing one of my projects, a different project. And I just thought, you know, she she's so scary in Handmaids, especially the first season. She's so intimidating and beautiful that you don't think she's going to be this like, goofy, hilarious, sweet human. And she truly is. And we did become friends. And I did not know if she would take this role. It's only one scene. She's literally an Emmy nominee. She's a movie star. Like she doesn't need this, but she read it, thought it was super funny. I thought it was super meta for her to play the, you know, in this that keeps referencing The Handmaid's Tale. She's glowing. But I also thought the world needs to see her comedy chops because she's so hilarious as a human and, and she's got this real um edge to her as a as a comedian so I'm so just like blessed that she would take one scene in my film I and she herself out to South by she came to promote it I mean just queen wow she is a queen I love that you have to tell her eventually that you were an extra no, I How know. Not even come up all on set? <laughs> I was an extra and then I she she came and did my film as a director my first film was a director I mean it's really a true Hollywood dream story. Oh, I love that. Well, Leah, they are wrapping me. I'm so excited for audiences to see Scrambled when it's out in theaters and on digital and on demand. You did a phenomenal job. And I love the main theme is just, you know, I'm doing the best about taking care of me. And I'm going to take that theme and carry it with me for 2024. And I think a lot of women, like I said, are going to feel the same way and really, really love this film. You did a phenomenal job. And I was so happy to chat with you today. Thank you, Lauren. You're such a doll. I so appreciate your support. Thank of you. course. Thank you, Leah. All the best. Have a good one. Thank Thanks, you. Lauren. Bye.